Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th tutorial in our series. In the previous tutorial, we learnt about events and how we can use them to create interactions in our games. Today, we'll learn how to create and give tools to players and we'll learn how to detect when a player equips a tool and uses it. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create your own tool from scratch, customise it and handle its basic events. First of all, what is a tool? A tool is simply an object that can be equipped by a model with a humanoid, such as your character, your avatar. When a tool is given to a player, it is stored in their backpack and they can equip it from here. Let's find a sword from the toolbox. So click on toolbox and look for a sword. We can use this one, it's made by Roblox. So let's insert that into the game by clicking on it and we'll add it to the starter pack. Whenever you add a tool to the starter pack service, this tool will be given to every player that joins the game. Let's try it. Now you should be able to see the sword tool in your backpack, and you can equip it by pressing the button or by pressing 1 on your keyboard. Let's try to create our own tool from scratch. Don't worry, it's really simple. First, add a tool object to the workspace. You can do that by clicking on the plus icon next to workspace, and then you can choose tool. Next, add a part inside the tool. This will be what the player will hold when the tool is equipped. Now, move the tool you just created to the starter pack. Every player who joins the game should now have this tool in their backpack when their character spawns. Let's test it. Nice, you should see the tool in your backpack. Let's try to equip it. Uh, why is it down there? If your tool isn't in your hand when you equip it, like mine, it's because we haven't told Roblox what the handle of our tool is. We know the handle is supposed to be this part that we added to the tool, but Roblox doesn't know that. All we have to do to fix this problem is change the part's name to handle and make sure the H is capitalized. The name handle tells Roblox that this part is what the player will hold when the tool is equipped. So let's test it again. If we equip the tool, perfect. The tool should now be properly equipped in your hand. If that didn't work, make sure that the part isn't welded to the base plate and that the part's anchored property is set to false. Make sure it's not anchored and then try again. You can customize your tool by adding more parts and welding them together and you can also change their appearance. Just make sure to keep the handle named handle. If you'd like to change where the tool is gripped from, you need to change the grip properties of the tool. I would really recommend installing the Tool Grip Editor plugin made by Clone Trooper, which really helps with making this process super easy. To do that, all you have to do is open the toolbox again, look at the Plugins tab in the Creator Store, and search up Tool, oh, tool Grip Editor. And it should be the one made by Maximum ADHD, also known as Cool Trooper. And once you've installed it, open up the plugin, then select a tool. So we'll select our tool we created, and then click on Edit Tool Grip. Now you can reposition the grip of your tool, and you can also change its orientation to whatever you like. And you can always look at this window to see how it would look in game. Once you're happy with how it looks, you can click away from the tool and test the game again. And now when you equip the tool, it should be gripped from wherever you set it to. If you equip the sword and click the left mouse button, the tool should activate, play some sounds, deal damage, etc. We'll learn how to play sounds and animations later, but let's simply try to print a message when a player equips this tool. We'll check the docs for the list of events a tool has. It mentions that tools have an activated event, a deactivated event, an equipped event, which fires when the tool is equipped. We'll connect a function to this event and see what happens. So to listen to this tool's equipped event, you can create a script inside the tool. And in the script, you'll need to find the tool so you can do stuff with it. The script is a child of the tool because it's located in it. So all you need to do is local tool equals script dot parent. This script variable, it's a built-in variable made by Roblox and it stores the script object that is running this code. So if you change the script's name to something like test and then add print script to your code, 
it should print the new name of the script, which is test. And since the script's parent is the tool, script.parent will return the tool. And you can always test that by printing the tool variable. Perfect. Now that you have the tool, you can listen to its equipped event. Like with all other events, you just do tool.equipped and then we use the connect method of this equipped event and in the parentheses of the connect method we pass a function we can create the function directly in the parentheses like this and in the function we can just add a simple print statement saying print tool equipped done let's test the code now whenever we equip the tool it should print tool equipped perfect and to detect when the tool is unequipped, we can just use the unequipped event of the tool. So tool.unequipped, and again, connect a function to it. And inside the function, we can just print tool unequipped. And test the code again. And this time, whenever we equip the tool, it says tool equipped. And if you unequip, it says tool unequipped, like so. Perfect. And to detect when a tool is used, we can use its activated event. This time, let's create a function that spawns a part at the center of the map and will connect it to the activated event. So whenever the tool is used, it's going to spawn a part at the center of the map. So tool.activated connect function. And in the function, we'll create a part first of all. And to create a part in our code, we just do local part equals instance dot new and inside the parentheses of this function we just pass in the class name which will be part so local part equals instance.new part then we set the parts position to something like vector3.new because we want it to be in the center of the map we'll keep the x and z components zero but the y component we'll set that to maybe four and don't forget to set the parent to the workspace and now let's test the code. So if we equip the tool and then try to use it, it should spawn a part at the center of the map. Perfect. And finally, to detect when a tool has stopped being used, so when a player releases their click, we use the tools deactivated event. We'll just connect a function to this which prints released click. Let's test the code. And now whenever we click, it should create a part and if you release our finger, it should say released click. Perfect. So you managed to create your own tool from scratch. You added a part to it called handle and listened to some of its events, like the equipped, unequipped, activated and deactivated events. Your tool is looking pretty good, but there is something missing that a good tool needs, and that's a tooltip. Usually in a Roblox game, when you hover your mouse over a tool in your backpack, it shows a message describing the tool. You can add a message like this to your tool by simply clicking on it and editing its tooltip property. I'll set it to something like part spawner. And now when you test the game and hover over the tool, it should show the tooltip you added. If you want to change it in your script, you just need to index the tooltip property and set it to a string of your choice. Some final notes before you finish up. By default, tools have their can be dropped property set to true, which allows players to drop them by pressing backspace on the keyboard and the tool can be picked up again by walking over it. This can lead to some problems. If a player drops a tool and then resets their character, they'll receive a new copy of the tool from the start pack when they respawn. They can walk over the tool they dropped before and now they'll have two copies of the same tool and they'll be able to repeat this process, duplicating tools. So it's usually best to set the can be dropped property to false, so players won't be able to drop the tool by pressing backspace anymore. This way, they won't be able to duplicate tools by resetting. And that's all for this lesson. We've covered a lot of ground today, from adding tools to your game using the toolbox, creating your own tools from scratch, customizing them, and even handling various tool events. Don't forget to keep practicing these concepts to get more comfortable with them. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments section. I'll try to respond as soon as I can. 
For some assignments, try to build on the tool we made today and make it continuously create parts whilst you hold the left mouse button. So when you click, it starts to create parts and doesn't stop until you release your finger. As for another assignment, try to use the debounce logic from the previous lesson and add a 5 second cooldown to a tool. I'll add my own solutions to these problems in the description. And that's all. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.